Welcome to day three of Reading Greek. Today we're going to talk about accents, and then we're going to just read through a couple of sentences slowly together. So let's take a look here. We got accents and practice. Accents in Greek. So in Greek, you're going to notice over the words a little line, like this big black line here, but smaller. That is the accent in Greek. There's some general rules for the accent. First of all, it's an emphasis accent. What's that mean? An emphasis accent means this is an accent mark that when you see it, you increase your volume when you're saying whatever it sits over. If it's sitting over an Omicron, for example, you're going to hit that Omicron with more volume. That's an emphasis accent. Some languages have other sorts of accents. One example is a tonal accent. A tonal accent would mean you change your pitch. You might rise in pitch or go down in pitch. But this accent in Greek is emphasis only. It changes the volume. That's actually what happens in English. So the accent, as I said, always sounds over the letter that it sits on. And then it also happens to always be found over a vowel or a diphthong, a set of vowels. So let's just look at some examples. Here we have the Greek word for telephone. And that word is pronounced T-le-phono. If I accent it differently, let's see if you can hear the difference. T-le-phono. Or I could say T-le-phono. Both of those sound funny. We want the accent on the epsilon. So we want to say T-le-phono. To say it differently would be like in English, instead of saying Telephone, saying something like telephone or telephone. It doesn't sound quite right. The next word we have in Greek there is theatro. Theatro. That means theater. If I said theatro or theatro instead of theatro, it would sound something like in English instead of saying theater, saying theater. A bit strange. And then finally, the last example is phenomeno. Phenomeno. That means phenomenon. Now, if we look a bit more closely, there are some combo rules. What do I mean? That when an accent is over a combination of letters, so a diphthong over two vowels, there's one rule it has to follow and then a couple of exceptions. The one rule is that in a normal vowel combination, the accent will be placed on the second vowel in the combination. So if you look here, we have an example. The word hero. The alpha and yota, we learned, make an e sound. So if we want to accent that e sound in the word hero, what do we do? We put the accent on the last vowel in the combination. So here it goes on the yota. Hero. Same with the following word, omicron and ypsilon. That combination makes the oo sound. So if we want to accent the oo sound in this word, we'll put the accent where? On the second vowel, on the ypsilon. So this word is pronounced pume, pume. Now, here's a question. What if we want to divide the combination? That is to say, what if we, we want the combination to actually not be pronounced like a combination? What if we want the alpha and iota, T, to be pronounced separately? There are two options. The first option would be used if, let's say, taking alpha and iota again as an example, if we wanted them to be pronounced separately and we wanted the accent to be on the alpha, we would put the accent on the alpha. So we would get a word like height. Alpha, the accent is over the alpha. And instead of pronouncing this word het and pronouncing the alpha and yod as a combination, we will pronounce them separately. Ha it. We can think of the accent there as breaking the combination. It's breaking the combination because it's on the first vowel in that two vowel combination, alpha yota. As we saw previously in hero, it's on the second vowel. When it's on the second vowel, the combination is still a combination. When it's on the first vowel, the combination is no longer a combination. And so, just reading again, 
In normal combinations, the accent sits on the last vowel in the combination. Hiero. But this exception here says if an accent is on the first vowel in a vowel combination, each vowel is pronounced separately. So it's really actually not a combination anymore. And the first vowel is accented. Height. Okay. Now, what if we wanted to pronounce two vowels in a combination separately, but we couldn't do it with the accent? What if the first vowel is not what we wanted to be accented? We didn't have something like height. What if we wanted to say something differently? Well, there's another way to divide combinations, and that is called a dieresis. It's these two dots. If you look at our example at the very bottom of the page, these two dots over the yota. That's called the dieresis. Dieresis means to divide in Greek. And what it does is it divides the combination. So looking at this word, at the bottom of the page, me and p together make a b sound. So we have b. And then omicron and yota normally combine and make a long e sound. E, b, ko, taro. Without looking at those two dots, we would pronounce this word b, ko, ta, ro. But now we have these dots, and the dots tell us what? They're dividing dots. They tell us that we divide the combination. So instead of saying b, ko, we're going to say b, and then omicron and yota separately, bo, i, ko. And that's why it sounds a bit like the English boycott. Bo i ko ta ro. Boy ko ta ro. I boycott. These last two points on this page are things that are important to understand to get an introduction to, but don't beat yourself up about memorizing them. At this point, as we encounter them, I'll point them out and you'll learn it quickly in、uh, this system. So that's it for accents. Emphasis accent. You pronounce it wherever it sits and it changes your volume. Now, let's do some reading practice. Reading. I, E, L, E, N, I, Helen, E, L, E, N, I, M, I, L, A, I, talks, Y, A, about, Ton, Co, Sta, about Costa. Let's see what Eleni has to say about Costa. Number one, Alpha, me, le, ne, e, le, ni. Me, le, ne, Eleni. They call me Eleni. Vita, ton, le, Ne, they call him k o ko sta costa ton lene costa. They call him costa. Number two, ton costa ton use a xi. Xe ro chronia ton ko sta ton xe ro chronia. Two things to say here.、Uh, the one is that、uh, oh, this by the way means. Costa, I've known him for years. The first difficult pronunciation point in this is he, an H sound, and a ro, and an R sound together. Ro, ro. So I have no tricks. You just have to listen and try to imitate. Ronya, ronya. The second point I want to make is we have a yota here at the end of the word, towards the end of the word. Ro. Ni and then yota chron ni ya. This yota alpha combination. We're now getting quite advanced, actually. Technically, we might pronounce this chron ni a chron 
nia, chronia. Greeks, when they're speaking, usually swallow that iota up with the alpha, and it ends up sounding a bit nasally and a bit like a Y. A Greek person would not say chronia. They would say chronia, chronia. So just to be aware of iota alpha at the end of the words, we're going to see it down here in this word, tends to get swallowed up and almost become one sound. Ya, ya. Vita, tu vita. Ton, rno, ri, sa, sta, ni, pia. Sta, ni, pia. Ton, no, ri, sa, sta, ni, pia. I met him in kindergarten. Number three. Here's a big word, and it means we grew up. Me, ga, lo, sa, me, ma, zi. Me, ga, lo, sa, me, ma, zi. We grew up together. T, to, ra, we're on three vita. To, ra, epsilon, ita, make a long e sound when they combined. I, ma, ste, pa, okay, pa, easy enough. Nitav, if you remember, make a d or an n d sound. So we have an n d here. To, ra, i, ma, ste, pand, pandre, me, n. Ni, Omicron Yota there, also combining to make a long E. To, ra, I, ma, ste, pan, re, me, ni. We grew up together, now we are married. Tessera, for, alpha, for, alpha. Epsilon Yota making an E sound, I, n, there's a ni, and then alpha Yota making an E sound. I, ne, Po li ka los o costas. Costa is very good. Vita ton a ga po po li. I love him very much. Listen to me pronounce this word for I love. A ga Po. The gamma there, we said, can sometimes be a G in our throat or a more of a Y sound. What do you think it is when I say this? A ra po. A ra po. It's the G caught in the throat. Here's the rule. Remember it or not, I'm going to tell you it now. When a gamma is followed by an open vowel, an open vowel for the Greeks is o, a, or u, as opposed to one where we close our, our mouth a bit more, e or e. Open vowels, after a gamma, mean the gamma is closed. You can think of it as alter alternating. So if we have an open vowel, after the gamma, the gamma is going to be closed first. A, ra, our throat, we're going to feel it in our throat and then the vowel will open. A ra po. A ra po. Poli. I love him very much. Moving on. Now we're going to hear O ko stas, costa, mi lai speaks, ya about, tin e le. Ni, about Helen. Before we see what Costa says, let's look at this word ya. There's two things to learn. First, the yota and alpha making a sort of ya sound, right? Ya, kind of combining. And the gamma, now is this one stuck in my throat or not? Let's listen. Ya, ya. It's not. R, y. This one is not stuck in my throat because it's followed by an E, a closed vowel. E and E are closed. 
A, O, U, those are open vowels. O costas milai ya tin eleni. Costa talks about eleni. Number one. Tin yi ne ka mu tin le ne e le ni. My wife, they call her Eleni. Number two. Aha pau tin e le ni a po to te pu i mu na mi cross. Agapao tin eleni apo tote pu imuna mi cross. I love Eleni, Eleni, or have loved Eleni since back when I was small, young. Number three. I ne mia pa ne mor fi. Yi ne ka. She is an extremely beautiful woman. Me pa ne mor fi with an extremely beautiful that's a psi. Psi hi. Psi hi soul or spirit. I ne mia pa ne mor fi. Yi ne ka. Me panemorfi psihi. Number four. Pa nitav making a nd sound. Pan drev and then epsilon epsilon making an e v sound. Pan drev or e f in this case. Pan drev ti ka. Me, we were married, stin in, flori, and now nt making, the nitav making a sort of d sound, stin florinda, stin florinda, in Florida. Meta, after, pira, me, after we went, sto, to, Here's a hard word. It's an English word. What's in Florida? Nitav here making a D. Dies, dies, then a ni making a n. Dies, n, and then an epsilon. Dies, ne, and then we see the epsilon with the two dots. That epsilon with the two dots called the diaresis, the divider. Remember, tells us we don't pronounce the epsilon, epsilon as a combination because then we would call this, we would say this word is pronounced disnev or disnef. It's not, it's pronounced disne e, just the sound of epsilon e. Meta pirame sto disney. 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 Disney World. Orea. Great job. Uh, that was day three. Tomorrow, we're going to talk briefly about keyboards. It's something really that you can usually figure out yourself on the internet, but I have some instructions in case you're puzzled. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just read together. We're going to read through a book, actually, that many generations of Greek read through when they were learning to read themselves in elementary school. All right. Thank you. And we'll see you at the next lesson.